You open your presentation in relation to increased pay allocation and just there has been a significant debate over the last number of months in relation to the enormous increase in the cost of living. Uh, and that relates very clearly to uh, pay allocations right across the public service in your own department uh, and obviously in, in the rest of society as well. And um, that rapid cost of, of living increase is actually reducing the purchasing power of, of every citizen uh, throughout the country at the moment. So people's real income is falling at the moment throughout the country. Um, now, the government have stood full square in trying against trying to ease uh, that difficulty by reducing VAT or even asking the EU for a derogation uh, for reducing VAT because of this crisis. And the government has also stood full square against the idea of wage inflation uh, to maintain the purchasing power of citizens. Yet, today we, we hear this, the unbelievable news again that uh, Robert Watt, the you know, top civil servant, uh, is has been awarded obviously 81,000 euros last year, but was also in receipt of a 3,000 euro uh, increase in October uh, on a top up on that wage there. Um, so on one level, the citizens are dealing with cost of living spikes. We're dealing with a deficit last year, 7 billion euros. You, you mentioned last week you were in that there was a 3 billion euro tax that's been warehoused because businesses couldn't afford to pay that. And yet what we have is the government actually involved in, in you know, creating wage inflation amongst the, the political and civil service class. How is that acceptable in any way? So I think it's worthwhile noting that across the period in which the current public service wage agreement was in place, we did have inflation levels that are significantly below the figures that the deputy is referring to in November and December. So if we look at the period for 2020, we actually had uh, some modest deflation of 0.5%. And then for 2021, the average inflation level across that period was 2.5%, though obviously it did increase very significantly across October, November and December. Uh, so uh, uh, across the period in which that wage agreement has been in place, um, at times it has been either ahead of or in line with the rate of inflation. Uh, but for the very latter end of last year, the uh, wage inflation, excuse me, the price inflation uh, did considerably increase. Um, our expectation is, though, as we move through this year, that we will see an um, improvement in some of the price pressures uh, that many uh, families and businesses are facing at the moment. And as I said in the floor of the Doyle earlier on, Deputy, uh, we have put in place as a government a whole set of policy measures to aim to respond back to this inflationary pressure that many have faced. Um, I've detailed what they are, changes that we've made in personal taxation, changes that have been made in social welfare, changes that we've aimed to make in relation to the cost of medical care and the cost of childcare, they're all in place. Uh, and um, we um, have, um, even for this early part of this year, as you know, put in place the measure now to seek to reduce energy bills for the first quarter of this year. So fully appreciate uh, the level of challenge, anxiety that this is causing for many at the moment, but this is why we have put the measures that I've referred to in place. The, thank you, Minister. Um, obviously, most people will have felt in their pockets that there's been significant increase in petrol and diesel and electricity. Farmers are, you know, seeing their fertilizer costs increase three times and um, you know, triple um, in, in, in level of foodstuffs have, have increased. And, you know, you would present yourself as a fiscally responsible minister uh, during this period of time. Is it fiscally responsible to give a civil servant an increase of 81,000 euros and then an increase in 3,000 euros um, in a, within the same year? Is it fiscally to have uh, responsible to have wage inflation within departments and um, you know uh, and you know this particular committee has done a, a wonderful report in relation to, to the process or lack of process in which that particular wage increase uh, was picked out of the, the, the sky and um, how can you how can you contrast the largesse experienced by the political class and the rest of society who at this moment in time are seeing their spending power reduce. Uh, but again, it is in recognition of the challenges that society is facing 
that we have made the changes that form the core part of our budget day measures. And we have made changes in personal tax credits. We have made changes in relation to the way level at which somebody pays the higher rate of income tax in our country, exactly in anticipation of the issues that you're referring to, Deputy. So uh, the reason why we have measures in place in relation to the cost of childcare, measures in place in relation to medical expenses, particularly helping families deal with the cost of medical expenses for their families, uh, for their children, and the reason why there's a whole uh, array of measures in place through the Department of Social Protection, the Living Alone Allowance, the Fuel Allowance, the Qualified Child Payment, not to mention, and needed, the increase in core rates uh, of five euros because we fully understand the uh, challenges that many are facing. It, it is worth saying, though, Deputy, that while I have responsibility for the measures that we have in place to try to mitigate uh, some of the issues that many are facing, the issues in relation to the cost of energy are ones the entire world is facing at the moment uh, and are caused by issues uh, that are being led elsewhere and not ones that we control. But that which we can influence, we are, and that is why we have the different measures in place that I've summarised. Well, just, just, just very briefly, the, the restriction path that this government had taken over the last two years was an outlier restriction path, um, not, not followed by any other European country, and that led to significant damage to supply chains in, in this state. I mentioned to you today earlier that we were the only country in the whole of the European Union that closed building sites for four months last year, while we have the biggest housing crisis uh, in all of the European Union. And um, that has meant that 10,000 houses working built. Supply is a big... Uh, influencer on, on cost of the price of houses and uh, of rent uh, uh, as well. Um, and, you know, you have done a wonderful job, Minister, studiously ignoring the name of Rob Bertwatt in both of your answers, studiously ignoring 84,000 pay hike that one civil servant achieved in the space of, of, of one year. And the contrast, you know, the, to the juxtaposition of that large largesse, that wage inflation, that's in the control of the government and the, the, the fall in income of citizens, the, the fall in spending power in citizens uh, across the country. The frustration that exists among citizens right now when they see those two different Irelands, an Ireland where they exist in and an Ireland where cumulatively all of the measures that you have taken, that you have mentioned, have less effect on their spending power than the inflation and the cost of living that they're experiencing. That's their Ireland. And yes, the circle, uh, the, the, the area that you control is an area that sees uh, senior civil servants magically achieve 84,000 uh, euro pay hikes in the space of one year. Will you address that pay hike and, and how it reflects on the rest of society? So I, I've addressed uh, that particular issue on other occasions in front of this committee. Uh, and uh, uh, I uh, uh, was um, a member of government and I uh, that, uh, agreed to this appointment. Uh, and I was also aware of and support the process that was underway that led to it happening. Uh, and I know the uh, committee has strong views in relation to it. Uh, the Secretary General of the Department of Health in that post is a very important post, and the role of the Department of Health has absolutely been central to us being able to regain our public health, uh, despite the loss of life, despite the loss of health that we have endured, and that many have experienced, which in turn has been very important to what we've been able to do with our economy. Uh, and uh, the Secretary General of that department has played an important role in us. Uh, but the Ireland that you speak of, uh, and the issues that you recognise, the issues that you're putting to me, they are issues that I recognise too. They're issues that I experience through my constituency work, uh, when I'm engaging with members of the public in my own constituents, and I am aware of all of the challenges and all of the pressure that they face. Uh, but the uh, attitude that you speak of, uh, Deputy, is also the same attitude that put in place the pandemic unemployment payment to support citizens at a time of need and put in place the employment wage subsidy scheme because we had the back of our citizens when we got hit by a pandemic. Um, and that speaks to the attitude that I have regarding the need to support our country during a time of challenge.
And I guess the final question to Kahir look on this, uh, I, I, you know, by the time we come to next year's estimates uh, and, and vote on the estimates, there will be no doubt, as sure as night follows day, that there will be a raft of public sector pay demands due to the fact that uh, pay, that income is actually reducing in real terms at the moment. And uh, we're going to see pay demands and increases of pay uh, happen right across society. If the government doesn't ameliorate the sources of these uh, cost increases, how can you, Minister, or any other Minister in government, have any credibility when you try to bat away those pay claims in the next 12 months, given that you stand over today a pay hike of €84,000 for the, the highest paying civil servant in the country? So we will indeed uh, have uh, engagement with the public service unions later on in the year in relation to a future wage agreement. And that matter will be led by Minister McGrath, who I will support fully. Uh, uh, our public servants have played a vital role in uh, the delivery of public services during the pandemic. And we've looked to recognise those who've been most immediately on the front line through the payment of the pandemic recognition payment there, which will be happening, I know, across the coming months. The unions will present uh, their case and the views of their members to us. Um, they'll make reference to all kinds of issues that they believe are important. I mean, um, you know, you offer a prediction in relation to what the unions will do. I'd also offer a prediction in relation to what you will do, which is no matter what agreement we come to, it will never be enough in your eyes. And you'll always condemn it. And that's a prediction that I can make with certainty, given your track record of the past, Deputy Tobin. Uh, this government uh, has, uh, this government and I, in the last uh, government, have negotiated a series of wage agreements with our public service unions that we have then implemented in good faith. Uh, and uh, we will do that again.